Yidashimase. Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot 'em Up Saturday, and on the menu this week we have Wow 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 Corone Box, a VTuber fan game. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. From developer Tianya, Wow 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 Corone Box originally released for the PC via itch.io in 2021. Now in April of 2024, it's available via Steam for free. So if you like what you see here, definitely check this game out. As far as the gameplay is concerned, this is a top-down twin stick inspired by games like Super Crate Box and Nuclear Throne. So if you like titles like that, then this also would be a reason to check this title out. It stars VTuber Inugami Krone of Hollow Live Gamers, Personally, one of my favorite VTubers, so that also elevates it for me as well. Although, overall, the gameplay is just fun, the whole design is cute, so really, this game has a lot of pluses for it, and given the price point, you couldn't ask for more. Here we find ourselves at the main menu. When you go into the play menu, there are three potential stages to play the game in. The bread box, the pepper box, and the orange box, all with their own individual high scores. There are also two difficulties for each stage, normal and hard. So if you find normal is kind of a cakewalk and you're able to get through the whole survival, then definitely bump up the difficulty and try the harder difficulties. Selecting Let's Go. As far as the gameplay is concerned, it's very standard twin stick. You've got your left stick for movement, right stick for aim, and then we have two different buttons for our fire. Uh, for most weapons, they'll actually behave the same way, but there are a couple that have either alternate fire modes or a couple different ways to use the weapon itself. So as far as the gameplay is concerned, as I said, we st uh, are playing the game as the cute VTuber Inugami Krone, but the gameplay is very super crate box. So there is an arrow that points to the next crate we need to pick up, and collecting those crates will do two things. It will change our weapon, which is briefly displayed on screen, and it increments our score. So the idea is you want to pick up as many crates as possible to increase your score. There will be enemies that spawn from these particular spawners, and in this game the enemies are basically characters from, uh, well, uh, Krone's designs in, in particular. The characters we see are the um, the listeners, or the uh, Kroneski as they're called, that um, are basically Krone's fans. There's also some other, like, uh, dogs, uh, some other VTubers do go and make appearances, that sort of thing. As far as weapons, there are 14 different weapons that you can potentially obtain from these crates. Initially, you start with about half that number, and through various gameplay, you will unlock those other weapons. Like the one we're using right now, Okayu happens to be one of the other VTubers in Krone's VTuber group, the Hollow Live Gamers. So now we have an interesting weapon. This is the Bonk Hammer. I'm not going to go directly for the next crate just so I can show this one off. So there are a couple melee weapons in the rotation. This one is interesting in that in addition to dealing heavy damage to the enemies when you hit them, which unfortunately is close range, uh, you will also reflect enemy bullets back at them for also dealing heavy damage. It's actually great for bosses if you can uh, get close as you'll be able to send a lot of times the bullet hell patterns that bosses have right back at them. So one thing to note, there isn't any kind of uh, dodge roll or dodge mechanic in this particular game, so you need to be careful to dodge the enemy bullets as best you can. Uh, there is no um, extra lives, it's all just a one hit mechanic, so if you take a hit then that's it for that particular run. And I have already finished uh, one run. The runs itself are super quick and snappy, so that definitely makes this game a really easy one to just dive back into. And it's quite addicting of a gameplay cycle, where you're just going around collecting these uh, crates and trying to survive as long as possible. Every 12th crate you'll end up getting a boss encounter. And there are a fair number of uh, bosses for this kind of a game. So this is usually the first one that you'll encounter, the three Husketeers. This boss is relatively straightforward. I did draw a short range weapon for it, but 
This is the chainsaw. One thing that is beneficial about the chainsaw is it actually cancels out enemy bullets. So as long as I'm careful with the enemies that are spawning around us, we can get in there, destroy the enemy, and then they drop a crate. Picking up the crate, uh, we got the frisbee. So this is a weapon you have to be careful about. Throwing the frisbee, it will bounce off surfaces, but the frisbee acts as kind of a uh, chainsaw or a, a buzzsaw disc where if, if it hits you it will actually deal damage well it'll kill you if so you do have to be careful uh, using that particular weapon the shotgun itself is powerful but it has a very short range so you have to get in close to use it so the boomerang is one that we get to see the dual fire mode on it. So we can either throw one boomerang or we can throw a set of three. Depending on which mode you take, it'll also depend on how long it takes to recharge. And that's basically your gameplay loop throughout the course of the gameplay. Uh, the goal is oh, to get as high a score as possible. And as I mentioned, every 12th um, crate, you do get the boss. So jumping to the, uh, another stage, just to kind of give you a little bit more idea of like the gameplay, this is our second stage option. And sometimes uh, you can kind of see just the RNG where if the crates spawn really close together, you can actually jump up score really, really fast. So this is uh, one of the weapons that sometimes can be very disadvantageous to draw for a boss. The hand mines themselves are powerful, but you have to have close range to actually make it effective. Making it uh, rather tricky to use for some bosses. The dual finger guns, yet another one that we can kind of show off the dual mode. So we can fire in both directions if we use the one fire button or kind of a V shot if we're uh, using, in this case, the tr trigger. So this is being played on a Steam Deck. What's well, one thing I like forgot to mention in the intro? Uh, it really plays great on it. Definitely one that um, has already earned its uh, Steam Deck verified. And uh, yeah, it's a great way to go and play both in handheld mode and if you happen to have a dock and throw it up on a TV or something like that. Oh. So the, this boss one we had here goes and throws eyes, but it also happens to have a couple special shots which will home in on us, and that's what ultimately got me there. So I do appreciate just the variety the bosses bring to the gameplay itself, as if it was just surviving against the normal mobs. Um, it might get a little bit more monotonous, but with the bosses in there, it just adds the right amount of spice to keep the gameplay fresh. And that is Wow 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 Krone Box served up for your enjoyment. It's definitely one that I can recommend, especially if you've been a fan of titles like Super Crate Box and Nuclear Throne. As far as the minus flavors are concerned, in this day and age, there's so many of these titles that are out there, and one of the big mechanics that is usually present is something like a dodge. So not having something like that can take a bit away from it. Uh, there's also the problem that sometimes you'll just get really screwed by the RNG when it comes to what you draw for a boss. So if you have a short range weapon like uh, the bonk hammer, the mine, the chainsaw, it can make using or defeating some of the bosses quite difficult or the frisbee. Um, in one of my runs earlier in the day I happen to have the frisbee for one of the bosses in the orange box uh, stage and I like uh, was able to defeat that particular boss but it was difficult having to go and dodge my own frisbees just so I uh, didn't actually uh, accidentally kill myself while I was fighting the particular boss. So I do really like uh, the Okai weapon as it just throws all these onigiri at the enemy itself. And if one thing that's neat about this one is it actually has a lot of knockback. So if you're have, wanting to go and make quick movement one way or another, you can shoot in the opposite direction you're moving, thus increasing your movement speed. It's just a quick, quick fun little trick. As far as the plus flavors for Wow Wow Kanone Box are concerned, the game design is just solid. It's a really 
uh, quick, short, fun gameplay loop where you're running around collecting boxes for score and uh, to progress further in the gameplay. It's also extremely addicting, so while the runs will oftentimes be short, it's uh, very much that kind of pick up and play one more uh, round kind of gameplay. So you'll have one run that goes kind of like, eh, so-so. It's like, no, I can go and do better. I'm going to like uh, dive in and uh, have another round. So before I pick up another crate, this is actually the first time we've seen the X-Potato Cannon. So this is a rocket launcher, and one thing that is nice about the explosive weapons, and this does include the hand mine, is it does clear the enemy bullets in the explosion range. So we do see one of the tricky enemies to go and deal with, uh, Subaru, one of the other VTubers uh, right there. The Mion Cannon! Then you have just that whole cute design, the cute character, the cute like uh, voice clips from the, the various streams. There's a whole bunch of memes that are like present that you would have to know a bit more about the character to fully get. But uh, she's a fun one to watch, so it maybe it might be like uh, worth being introduced to the particular character. And then lastly. The value for free really can you go and complain with like any kind of decent twin stick shoot 'em up uh, for that kind of price point sometimes you have some that have a questionable quality but I feel that this one really does have the quality to make it worth the time to pick up and play and that brings us to the end of this week's episode of shoot 'em up Saturday it's definitely a solid recommend from the chef for multiple reasons. Alright, as always, I want to thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful week yourself, and we look forward to seeing you again next time.